if you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you want more money to fund your deals regardless of your credit, your experience in real estate investing, or your verification of income, don't go anywhere because I'm getting ready to plug you into the money right now. Welcome to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I am Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, broadcasting to you here on the show from Moorhead City, North Carolina. And I'm so excited to have as my special guest today, Crystal and Dan. So Crystal and Dan, how are you? Say hello to everybody. Fantastic. Hey. Great. Awesome. We're awesome. doing great. So everybody uh, here on the show, uh, if you're new to the show, we talk about everything uh, relating to real estate investing, how to find deals, how to get your deals funded, how to sell them fast, how to automate the business, and et cetera. And I've invited Crystal and Dan to come here on the show uh, because they are some of my very successful students that came into my world uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, they've got a really, really fantastic, interesting story to tell about their backgrounds, where they came from, and how very, very quickly they retired from both of their day jobs and are now full-time real estate investors. But I'll let them tell their story in just a moment. Before I uh, invite Crystal and Dan to, um, to the interview and tell their story, let me remind everyone that the last live event of this year the Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference. The last one this year is coming up October 10, 11, and 12, 2018, just a short ways away. Uh, go on over to the website after the show and check it out and get registered. The website is www.jayconner.com. -E and we've got it right down here below the, at the bottom of the screen. That's www.jayconner.com -E forward slash money podcast, all in lowercase, jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. Why would you want to get to this event? Well, I'm going to let Crystal and Dan tell you before they tell you their story. So Crystal and Dan, I'm going to turn it over to y'all for a moment now. You're at all of my live events uh, for the last uh, couple of years. Uh, you are uh, in, have been in my platinum program. You are in my mastermind group. You're at the top tier. Why don't, before we get into your story, take just a moment and tell our viewers and listeners why they would want to get to this live event. So the reason you want to come to the live event um, is because in our case, we attended, like Jay said, we met him just a couple of years ago and we listened to the material. We learned so, so much while we were there, but um, we got to meet Jay and Carol Joy and the rest of the family and really felt like we were part of that family. And then subsequently from learning all the information that we did while we were there, we definitely felt an impetus to join the group. So that's how we became platinum members and subsequently mastermind members and definitely changed our lives. So it is an incredible event. It's life changing. That's why we are where we are. So I would definitely not only recommend, but implore you to assure that you can attend this. Yeah. And so um, thank you, Crystal. So the um, uh, to give our viewers and listeners a, a little bit of detail as to what happens. So it's a three day event, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, October 10, 11 and 12. And what's going to happen on the first day, the first half of the day is we dive deep on getting uh, private money, uh, uh, teaching how to get private money, uh, learning what it is. And if you're new to the show, folks, we're not talking hard money. Uh, with hard money brokers, we're truly talking about private money, getting your funding from individuals. Carol Joy and I now have 47 private lenders that are funding our deals. Crystal and Dan, you all have your all's multiple private lenders. So the first half of the day is about getting the funding for your deals. Uh, the last half of the first day is we go on the bus tour where we actually go out and look at our houses. So we're not looking at houses in the multiple listing service but we're looking at our houses that are either under renovation or we've completed them and you can see how they're finished. Uh, you meet our interior designer, Beth Garner, you meet our contractors that we do business with. So you learn exactly how we do the business so you can duplicate it. On the second day, I teach uh, a 30,000 foot view of how we find deals before other real estate investors know they exist, uh, how we can sell them quickly in three days or less. And the third day is all about automation, how we automate the business. 
At the end of the second day, we have my personal private lenders come to the event that you can network with. We have an amazing VIP reception on the evening of the second day. So again, if you're remotely interested in taking your real estate investing business to the next level, you definitely want to get to this real estate investing cash flow conference. Go on over to the website when we finish the show at www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. All right, back to you, Dan and Crystal. Um, so how did we meet for the first time? Ah. <laughs> we met for the first time when I was actually attending um, another real estate conference and I literally ran you over in the hallway getting on onto an elevator and you were just incredibly decent and kind and gracious. And I not there, not long thereafter discovered that you were actually speaking at the event and I was, was pretty embarrassed, but you were very, very kind about it. And we ended up meeting up later at your event. That's right. That's right. And so, uh, so you came in, so you came to my event for the first time, how long ago? Was Just two, about two years. Yep. Two, so two years ago. And so since that time, just round figures, uh, how much profit and equity have you earned uh, since coming into my world? Uh, profit and equity, round figures. 4.5 million in um it, well, hold on. I'm sorry. That's in our assets. 2.75 million um, in equity and in profits, um, just over a million. Awesome. And how much private money funding have you gotten since uh, coming into my world? 850,000. Congratulations. So you see, folks, once you just growing. Start, huh? And growing. Oh, absolutely. I know you all are growing. That, that's not stopping. So I, I, well, let me ask you this question. When you, when, you first, um, when you first came in, both of you were full-time in your day jobs, right? So Dan, what was your background as far as your career goes prior to the world of real estate investing? Well, okay. Uh, I did 21 and a half years in the Navy, active duty, uh, travel around the world. And retired from that 30 minutes later, started working as an IT for the Coast Guard for their search and rescue software. Did 16 years of that. Uh, just, well, 15 years of that. Met this lovely lady here. And she enticed me into the uh, world of real estate. So there you go. That's my background. All right. And uh, Crystal, how about your background? I, I spent 26 years as an occupational therapist and had a career in management for 25 of those 26 years, um, working endless hours. <laughs> right. So you were, uh, you were, your career was occupational therapy. That's and correct. so when we met two years ago, was it your desire then at that time to go full-time real estate investing at some point in the future or you didn't really know? You were sort of just going to see how it went. Yeah, I think I was a bit on the fence. I'd started investing in 1996 and had always done it um, part time, took a break for a couple of years when um, I had my children and had gotten married. And um, and so I wasn't really 100 percent sure if I was looking to make that transition right at that moment. Right. It wasn't long after that, that I was able to make up my mind. But at that moment, I was a little on the fence. Yeah. So, Dan, you mentioned a moment ago that it was Crystal that got you, I say, interested. I don't know if she got you interested. I think she dragged you to uh, the first event. I'm not sure. But um, so was it Crystal that got you interested in real estate investing or was there something else? No, it was definitely Crystal. Uh, most of my life, I have just simply been working along and working along and working along and accepting what I got, you know, accepting your promotions, accepting your positions that you get, standard advancements, especially in the military. That's just what you do. You just do that, accept it. Uh, I followed through with the government contracting, same kind of mindset, never realizing my potential because you're always placed in a box. Well, with real estate investing, as Crystal showed me as you showed me there is no box the box is whatever you decide to make it so it was an amazing thing i was extremely skeptical but once i attended your event 
it it opened up doors. It definitely opened up doors in my mind as well as as physically, and it was an incredible event. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Crystal, um, what got you interested in real estate investing originally? I mean, you first started. When did you say back when? Nineteen ninety six. Nineteen ninety six. So what got you interested originally? So um, my family didn't have much money and we grew up in a house that was always in a constant state of remodeling. At least that's the way my mom described it. And um, so my dad and I were always tinkering around doing projects, whatever that might be, even even refinishing furniture and what have you. So um, I just had a bit of a bug for taking something that was in a bit of disrepair and making it better. And I knew that there was a lot of opportunity to make you know, to make some money, at least that was my perception back then, um, in addition to what I was doing. So there was just a lot of benefit with, without having to go, go get a whole other job or anything else. It was something I could do while I was still working my job. Right, right. And tell everybody what area of the country you all are located in. So we're in North Carolina. So we're right. the Southeast. Right. So you're up near the, you're up near the Virginia border, right? That's correct. And we actually invest up in that area. So on the south side of Virginia, um, Virginia Beach, Suffolk, Chesapeake. Right, right. So um, y'all give my viewers and listeners, uh, tell them what kind of deals are you doing? So you're primarily focusing on single family houses like I do, right? Correct. Yeah. So just give us an overview of the kind of deals you're doing. So um, we're split and it just depends on um, the timing, whether we're 60, 40, one way or 60, 40, the other. Um, we do rehab and do resale uh, much in the same way that you do. The decision is really made as to what the market brings. So we may sell in the MLS. We may sell it in a different fashion, just depending on um, what's available to us. We purchase homes that are in perfect condition and we're able to, um, to get those right back on the market and sell those um with a rent to own buyer and so look at different opportunities for how we can do that and, and it just depends um as to the deal dictates how we invest the funds and and get our private lenders money working for them yeah so some deals you're funding with private money okay right. uh you're funding your deals uh some other ways as well right that's right so you do a number of subject to deals right we do all right. So tell our viewers and listeners what we mean when we say you're, in fact, you do a, you do a lot of subject to deals, right? We do. Just, like, right. just like in the last 90 days, how many new deals have you done? We did, oh, in the last 90 days, we did 10, nine of which were subject to. Right. So tell our viewers and listeners, what is a subject to deal and what does that mean? Sure. So subject to indicates subject to the existing mortgage. So we're purchasing a property, the Existing mortgage remains in place. We actually make an agreement with the seller to take over all payment taxes, insurance. Um, we're also going to take care of maintenance and repairs. We don't charge them any commissions. We take care of their closing costs and they're able to move on and they don't have to worry about it. And then we pay that mortgage until we're cashed out, um, whether it be through the MLS or with the tenant buyer. So let me be the devil's advocate for a second. Who, who in the world would sell you their house and allow the mortgage to stay in their name and transfer you the title and deed to their house and believe and trust that you're going to make their payments until you get a cash out buyer? Who would do that? A motivated seller. So people who are in a position where they want Maybe they're in a position where they can't afford the mortgage anymore, so they need to figure out what else to do. We encounter a lot of people who are in the military in our area, and it's very unfortunate because they get transferred unexpectedly. They may have already purchased a home. It's rented out. Now they've got this other home. They haven't lived in it long enough. They don't have enough equity, so they, don't, they can't have another encumbrance on their finances. Um, we have individuals who um, have lost their job who have gone through some of the pitfalls that have happened with the economy. Um, they definitely are in a position where they just, they can't handle it. So we're giving them debt relief and stress relief. And so there's actually a lot of people who are suffering and this is a nice way for them to move on and not have to worry about it. So 
they, they trust us because they meet with us at our attorney's office. All the documents are drawn at the attorney's office. They can see that we have a good history, anything you see about us out there. And of course they meet us and we take the time to get to know them so that they have the opportunity to understand what that relationship is going to look like. Exactly. And I want to remind everybody that uh, both Crystal and Dan are going to be at the upcoming uh, real estate investing cash flow conference. So you get to meet with them and network with them and talk about how they do their business uh, as well. So what I'd like for us to do now, y'all went full time. Okay. So uh, Crystal, you retired from your day job. Uh, how long ago? Was it about a year ago? Over a year ago. It's been a year and uh, mm -hmm. almost four months. Mm -hmm. Okay. A year, four months ago. So you went full-time real estate investing and Dan, I don't think you had even dreamed, well, maybe you had dreamed about it, but I don't think you'd even seriously considered retiring from your day job. Uh, when we first met two years ago, had you? No. no right. No. And so you retired from your day job. How long ago? Well, it was December of last year. Okay, so about a year, and uh, uh, oh, just as fast as December, that's right. So that was about nine months ago or so. So now we have this husband-wife team that have been released and set free from their day jobs. They now decide what they're going to do, when they're going to do it, et cetera. So let's talk for a second about the challenges of a husband and wife team in the real estate investing business together. So have you had some challenges working together as the husband wife team in the real estate investing? I'll speak up for that one really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, I, I think um, Crystal had a very clear concept of where she wanted the business to go and where she wanted her career to go as well. Uh, when I joined into it, I realized I had a lot of catch up work to do. So working as a husband and wife, I would never ever turn back on that. I, I would highly recommend that if you have the opportunity to work as a husband and wife crew or team together, definitely do that. Uh, but understand that it does require considerable work. Uh, I learned very quickly what my responsibilities were, what I needed to do in order to contribute and take on those. And Crystal was very clear in making sure that I understood those modes as well. So uh, it, it was a great, it's a great dynamic. So as long as you understand that you work together as a couple, um, the challenges that you may find, which could be different from my 24 seven job, um, you can overcome. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, Carol, Joy and I, I mean, you know, we've been working the business together now for 15 years. Um, so, you know, we've got our own stories as well. Crystal, what's your take on that? Sure. I think the, the biggest challenge is, well, and we had, we really had two, we've been very fortunate, however, but we've had two. Um, the first was just really understanding delineation of responsibility. And so when you're working together as a team, um, in a space like this, there isn't anybody else who's going to come and say, hey, you have to do A, you're going to do B. And that's what the list looks like. You have to sit down and really work through that. So um, the first piece of working through that is that you're willing to, to be open and to communicate. And that's a really big key. Um, our other issue was just space. So um, I can, I am a creative, so I can cover every surface and I've got all these great ideas. And I'm doing all these things and that's my personality. It will always be my personality. So Dan had to say, okay, I have to uncover this spot. This is just, you can't put stuff on it and that's okay. I just cover all the rest of the spaces with my stuff. So we work through that, but that is, that's, it's crystal land. Uh, like I'm always onto something else that like, this is so great. We got to be working on it. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. So as you all are running your business now, uh, give us an example of who is responsible for what, who does what, who oversees what. Sure. So I have responsibility predominantly for interacting with the attorney's office, the accountant. Um, I, and so therefore making sure all that paperwork transfers back and forth and all those communications happen. Um, even though our accountant handles the billing, I still am the person who makes sure that 
all those pieces, parts are still in the right space um, as we grow and change and constantly are adding new properties. I predominantly deal with the private lenders, um, although we both have those conversations. But in terms of who's responsible, I make sure that, um, that all those things are in place and those communications happen. I... I talk to only probably about 25% of the sellers right now because that's a role that um, Dan has expanded and worked through and been growing with. So I do a little less of that. Um, Dan does buyer conversations, um, meets them at the houses, um, follows up with um, any of the services that need to happen. So just making sure all the services are in place for each of the houses and that they all get turned on and off at the right time. Um, I deal with the contractor just cause we're good friends. He's, yeah. he, he's like my dad. So I can't get rid of that one. Anytime that Dan <laughs> tries to deal with them, it just doesn't work as well. Yeah, no. So, so he likes me, but he loves her. So <laughs> the difference is about $10,000 difference. So I will let her talk to him for $10,000. I'm good with that. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Well, excellent. Excellent. You know, the biggest thing Carol Joy and I learned as we started doing the business together is, is to learn who's going to be responsible for what and, and trust your partner, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a business partner, no matter who you're doing the business with, and also to communicate with each other regularly as to where you are and what's going on in the business. Um, and I've, I've heard you all talk about your regular communication about the business. What does that look like? Yeah, so we have a meeting every single night um, before we go to bed. And, <laughs> well, we do, we meet. Um, and we go through what happened during the day, what's coming up for the next day, outline our schedules, make sure that they're aligning, that what was on them is still on or off or who's going to go where, um, just because you don't know. And then actually, so... We spend a, a bit of time doing that and just catching up and then preparing. And then in the morning, we do another about five-minute touch base just before we start our day. Has anything happened overnight? Did any emails come in that changed things, texts? We all know in the world that we live in, things happen really quickly. So we can certainly have a grand plan and some things might change. So we touch base quick in the morning um, and then as needed throughout the day. But those are our big pieces where we make sure everything stays aligned and then we keep a calendar that we can both see electronically. Excellent. So let's go back for a moment to you all uh, each uh, individually deciding to retire from your previous careers and day jobs. Let me start with Dan. It'd be the same question for both of you. Um, why real estate? Why did you decide to go full-time real estate and leave the daytime? Why, well, not, why not something else? Sure. Well, you know, I'll be brutally honest here. Uh, as I was at the event, I would never have considered real estate until I met Crystal. She invited me down to your event, and I thought, well, you can't buy houses without a realtor. It's not possible. So I, I came down to the event with a very closed mind and identified very quickly with you because you present yourself with Carol Joy, with the whole family, the crew of really engaging with everyone there. You truly want folks that want to help themselves and want them, want their families to be profitable and be healthy and be happy. And I, I just engage with that. So the more that I followed through with it, the more I realized this is actually the right way to go. Uh, as I talked to some of the realtor friends of mine, they are obviously they're realtors and no offense to any realtors. Uh, they didn't agree with it, but the more I investigated, the more you gave me, the more information, the more she explained to me, the more I realized that was the better route for me to go. I was less happy with my career that I thought I was happy with. And I wanted more to have my own business. So that would be it right there. Perfect. Why, why real estate, uh, Crystal? So I explained kind of what my initial interest in bug was, but to be honest, more um, to go a little deeper with that, it's because of the freedom that it offers me. So um, in real estate investing, I can put in a lot less time and 
get a lot more out of it, which allows me to have more time with my family in our church um, and in social spaces, contributing to the community. Um, we get to be part of a lot of network groups. And so it affords us the opportunity to do the things that we want to do to travel and to have the freedom to do that. So um, both I enjoy it as a vehicle, but it just really opens up and allows so much more to us than would be in any other type of situation where you literally have to put in an hour to get an hour worth of pay where we put in, it's whatever deals we can negotiate, whatever costs our table and we get paid based on our expertise. What are your average profits on your deals now? 73,000. Yeah, that's a little disgusting because mine is 67,000. You got me beat. Sorry. It's not like when the student stands on the coach's shoulder and just leaps forward. So I love it. I love it. So uh, let's do something. Uh, let's do another fun thing. Y'all have done a ton of deals. Y'all have done a lot of deals in the last couple of years. Um, I'd like for you to think of a deal to where uh, you can tell us the story of the, of the deal. So we'll cover this in like five minutes or less. But the story of the deal, how you found it and what happened in the deal. Uh, and we can, you know, get two or three lessons from it for our viewers and listeners. Okay, so a lesson deal. <laughs> yeah. Not, not oh. that they don't have lessons out of every deal, right? Oh, for sure. For sure. Um so we, gosh, there's a couple I could think of that would actually be really good lessons. Yorkshire would be a really good one. Wait, positive lessons or negative well, lessons? Well, no, I'm I mean kidding. lessons. Well, anything you learn. Anything you learn. Okay, so we have South Main Street and we have Yorkshire. Which one do you want to do? Um, South Main Street. Okay. So, um, so, how, so South Main Street, how did you find it? So we found it through the MLS, so Realtor. So was it a bank and was it a bank and property? Yep, absolutely. It so had been, go ahead. It had been on the market for some time. It had actually been under contract. That contract fell through. That happened two or three times. So obviously they were a bit more hungry for a buyer. It happened eleven times. Um, well, the, those were the ones I knew about. Okay. Um, so by the time we had had it brought to our attention, it was. Um, on the market for 97000 It was a five-bedroom, two-full bath, um, 3,200 square foot. Yeah, 3,200 square foot home. All full, brick. All brick. Um, and in a really nice up-and-coming neighborhood. So it was a neighborhood that had been um, affluent and had fallen into disrepair and so was going through the gentrification process. Um, we were not the forerunners on it, <laughs> but, uh, so we, we offered 67,000 and our offer was accepted. Oh, wow. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So they were hungry. So that was good for us. It had already, oh, go what, ahead. Yeah. What was the after repaired or what was the after repaired value? 225.9. So right at 225,000 is the after repaired value. You bought it for 67. Correct. All right. Go ahead. So... So do you want me to finish up before we get to the lessons? Just zip on through? Sure. And we can give you the lessons? All right. So so we ended up putting um, 30 grand into it, um, sold it for two five two uh fifty nine nine. So you ended up with about a hundred in it. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You bought yep. it for seven, you put what, thirty in it. So that's right. ninety seven, call it a hundred. Uh, right. so you got a hundred in it and you sold it for how much? Two fifty nine nine. So you got about a hundred and fifty or so thousand dollar profit after closing costs. All right, lessons uh, lessons learned. Yeah. So um, <laughs> so the the first one was that someone had gone in and started to do a little bit of rehab um, before we had ever purchased it, and so we learned a lot because we did not on this deal we did not have our contractor with us. And so things on the outside looked a little bit better. And I mean, outside, like on the inside about what you could see, uh, looked a lot better than they were. So we had a vision of what this was going to be like process wise and time wise. And that just did not happen. The second lesson learned was we did not have a contractor that we had a good relationship with. Um, we came by somebody on recommendation. This was our first time working with him. And he did 
some kind of crazy thing. So we had paid him some money. He was one of those contractors. This is something I'm sure that you've shared and will be shared many times over, but, um, he had been asking for draws weekly. So big red flag. Um, and then he would show work that appeared to be done. And we later found out that it was just on the surface. So we put like plumbing pipes in, but there's actually, it wasn't attached to anything. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other things he had done, but there were a couple of things that were, that it looked really evident. And, and he had some guy that walked around and painted all the time. Weirdest thing I've ever seen. So we had given him some money and he left. Gratefully, we met the contractor that is the gentleman that we work with him and his subcontractors all the time on the back end of that. And he saved us and made this, so it still ended up being a $30,000 rehab because it could have really gone south fast. Um, we learned a lesson about a realtor. So we had a realtor come in, tell us that we could get upwards of close to 300000 for the house, went through a lot of highs and lows and um, a lot of discussions with that. So, you know, just, we all know it's really important to have a good relationship with a realtor, get to know each other um, and, and meet a few. So we ended up having to go with the next one in line and that worked out great. No problem. But um, so we learned a few things during this process. That's awesome. Awesome. So if you had known before, known back when you started on that project, on the rehab piece, what you now know, what would you have done different on hiring the contractor? So that was, that was going to be a tricky one either way, but um, we would have done a little bit more due diligence in regard to finding out, you know, who it is that he worked with for vendors so that we could have gotten a little bit more information on that. Um, so a little bit more of a deep dive. I think we would have found out that he wasn't paying his bills and, and that type of thing. We had gotten referrals. We had actually gotten recommendations, but I suspicion they were probably just all friends, people that said they worked with him and, you know, just pleasantly, you know, supported him. But what we would have definitely, that would have been my first piece is reach out and identify, you know, where, where are you getting your supplies? Would love to talk to the supplier, get an idea of how that relationship works. And we would have found out right there that he had a history. Right. And the, the idea of taking a weekly draw is not a good and we idea. We would have never done that. Definitely nothing, <laughs> definitely nothing up front. Definitely not doing weekly draws. If they can't carry themselves for at least two to three weeks or a month, then they're probably not the ones we want to do. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we're almost out of time for this show, but I got a couple of uh, last questions before we uh, call this show a wrap. Um, and this is to both of you. So um, do either one of you all have, I know you do, but what personal success habit do you have that you would say really lends to you all being successful? Like uh, some daily habit or what have you? Uh, who wants to go first? <laughs> so um, morning routine is huge for me. So spending time, um, affirmations, magic question, um, and really visualizing what I want things to look like what my success looks like. Um, and that can, it, it varies obviously depending on whatever it is that I'm working on at that point, having vision boards. Um, so I'm very focused on those, um, those positive things, maintaining positive, a gratitude exercise is a part of not just my morning, but if I, if I discover I need it throughout the day, then I'll plug in and, and go through and come up with at least five put a smile back on my face and I really attribute a great deal to our success to having made those changes in our life. Cause that certainly was not always part of what I did. Excellent. How about you, Dan? Okay. Well, I would think the very first thing is to put your ego aside. That which, What's yours though? What do you do? Well, that's what I do. I put my okay. ego aside. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just swallow it up and um, I, every night I do a mental rewind of my day. I think about everything that I did and or did not do uh, and recognize the fact that and acknowledge the fact that if I didn't do something I was supposed to do, I write it down and I take full account for it. So you have to account for everything you have done or have not done and then move forward through it. You can't stop. You can't stall. You have to continually keep pushing forward. So that's what I try to do. So if I didn't do something that night, and I know he didn't do it, and I'm probably not going to sleep well. I'm going to get up the next morning. I'm going to push through. I'm going to make either make those seller phone calls, or I'm going to set up that uh, 
insurance program or whatever it happens to be that I did not do. So that's really what I do. All right. Excellent. So one last question, and this will be from both of you. And Dan, you go first and then Crystal, you go second. And here's the question. What comes, what's the first thing that comes to mind as to the best real estate investing advice you could give to a new real estate investor? Well, meet her, first of all. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Jay. but you can't. So anyways, uh, yeah, and Jay, of course. Uh, I, I would say uh, self-improvement is the biggest thing. Mindset. Get your mind right. Ignore all the naysayers. Uh, Les Brown said, only quality people, OQP. So if you don't, if you want to sit around the water cooler and listen to a bunch of negative conversations, you're not going to go far. Get away from the negative conversations, ignore all the people that say you can't do it, and put yourself in the mi right mindset that says you can do it. Awesome. Crystal? Get a coach and mentor. <laughs> Learn from someone that offers quality advice, quality information, provides support, knows what they're doing, has a trusted method, jump on their coattails and learn. Be open, show up, show up for yourself, show up for each other, show up for the program. Um, but that's the very best advice I can offer is just don't, don't think that you can read a book or go get some information off the internet and that this is just, oh, no problem. I'll just go do it because you'll stumble and fall and you'll spend so much more money making those mistakes and learning those lessons than if you can get with somebody who can help you to understand what needs to happen, learn the lesson now from them, invest in yourself and invest in your future. Excellent. Well, I can't thank you all enough for joining me here on the show today. Thank you, Dan. And thank you, Crystal. I'm looking forward to seeing you all uh, right around the corner at the upcoming uh, last event of this year. Yeah, it's uh, your birthday. <laughs> yeah. In fact, that's the week of my birthday at this upcoming event. So everybody get on over right now to www.jayconner.com forward slash all in lowercase money podcast and we'll see you at the upcoming event thank you dan very much thank you jay for inviting us and thank you crystal it's been a blast and also everyone we appreciate it if you're watching on youtube uh to subscribe so you don't miss out on the, the upcoming shows uh you can put comments down below any questions we'll get your uh, questions answered uh there if you're uh, watching on youtube and uh give us a thumbs up give us a like we appreciate that and if you're listening on uh itunes uh then subscribe rate and review i'm jay connor the private money authority here from the jay connor show love to you dan and crystal we'll see y'all guys at the upcoming event and we'll catch you later here's to taking a year of real estate investing uh experience and success to the next level bye for now bye for now